Hello YouTube, it's Lion here with Hobbies of Man once again and today we are doing another manga review. Now today we are going to be reviewing the first two volumes of Hokkaido Gals Are Super Adorable, which is very true according to this manga. Now the author here is Kai Ikata, I think that's how you say his name. Um, and the publisher here is Shueisha and they actually do it through Manga Plus, which is a uh, manga reading service that you can buy but a lot of these are actually free on there so you can just read them like that um and this is technically a shonen jump plus manga which is kind of like kaiju number eight one punch man and spy family so there you go the demographic is obviously shonen and the genres here are rom-com purely rom-com but i would say that a lot of rom-com also is you know, by definition, slice of life, so we do get a lot of that type of stuff as well. Um, and adaptation-wise, this does not have one, and I hope it does get one at one point, um, because I really want physical editions of this, and so far there has been no visible possibility of that for the English market, since it is, you know, only available online. And uh, yeah, the premise here is that this rich kid from Tokyo moves to Hokkaido, which is the Japanese equivalent of the boonies, right? Like, it's like some backwater area that may, well, maybe not a, not a backwater area, but it's like a much less densely populated area. For us in the U.S., it's basically like moving to the Midwest. Like, you know, no one lives in the Midwest um, and there's just a bunch of like farms and shit, so... It's kind of like that. It's like someone from New York moving to uh, the Midwest, basically. That That's the equivalent. Um, and he meets this gal. And gals are basically like Japanese Starbucks girls, more or less. Like <laughs> like valley girls or like people of that sort. I, I, I used to think that it was it was like a, a Japanese bimbo, you know, like blonde hair, big boobs, that sort of thing. And they were kind of like dumb. But that's not actually true. So, um... It, it's more like they just like like American style aesthetics, I guess. Something along those lines. Basically, they usually have bleached blonde hair. They wear short skirts and they're a lot more like touchy feely than usual. Right. So there you go. And uh, he meets her on his first day and then becomes friends with her. And then there seems to be this whole kind of like will they won't they romance will bloom kind of situation going on and it actually is a very fun read i actually really liked it a lot it was really heartwarming and it was really enjoyable and uh just really relaxing there's currently four volumes out um in japan but you can read all of the volumes for that on manga plus as well as uh all the volumes that haven't been collected into volume or all the chapters that haven't been collected into volumes yet um, and it's currently serializing, so you get a new chapter every week. And I, I think it's actually two chapters a week because the mangaka splits it into two, as far as I know. Um, so sometimes you get like 17.1 and 17.2 or something like that. I can't remember um, how they label it, but basically you get a lot of uh, chapters. And uh, yeah, so let's jump into the uh, review portion for real now. The plotline here is really good. It's a rom-com, so most of the plotline develops along this idea of, like, kind of episodic, you know, stories. And so each chapter is a different story that deals with um, a new day or, uh, you know, some other portion of time that has passed between the last chapter and this one and with a specific event, right? So... Um, the ones that I liked the most were the one where they go skiing, which is near the end of the second volume. The one where they go to the uh, winter festival, which was like the end of the first volume, I think. I liked the Valentine's Day um, thing as well quite a lot. And there was another one. Oh, and when uh, Subasa, the main character, goes to uh, Minami's house. Minami is the gal, so... Those are the four events that I really liked, and I guess they were all multi-chaptered. But, like, the point is that most of the time, it, it's, like, small stories that are set, you know, like, together. Um, and, yeah, I, I just really enjoy how the events unfold. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that they feel supernatural. I mean, everything is a little bit contrived, obviously, because it's a story. 
but everything feels like it's possible and everything is like um maybe not relatable because i haven't been swept off my feet by this gorgeous thick uh, you know blonde chick from from japan like <laughs> like the main character has but like what i'm trying to say is that it's like understandable and you can kind of see where he's coming from and where the uh female characters are coming from as well and how like you know it's just relatable and you can connect to it and it's actually quite cute and very enjoyable and i just like how everything kind of develops and it's not really like that serious but it's not like ridiculous either it's just a very nice balanced enjoyable like here let's just sit down and enjoy these people's stories um for a little while kind of feeling to it and i just really love it although i have to admit it does get a little bit too raunchy sometimes um and it like it totally fits with the characters that they built um and it totally makes sense that this is the type of manga that it would be because that's what the manga portrays itself as but sometimes it feels like ridiculously raunchy for the level like outside of the level that the situation would call for if you could say that situation call for raunchiness um but i actually quite like it i thought it was fun because like the whole point is to make the main character feel like super flustered and confused um like oh my god what the heck's going on and it, it w works really nicely and i like that um so you know sometimes it does get a little bit raunchy so if you don't like that maybe don't read this but overall i think it is quite an enjoyable story so yeah now the characters um i really like them there's basically only three characters in the first two volumes there's our boy subasa uh his last name is shiki i think and uh he's basically super lame in tokyo but now that he's moved to hokkaido he's interesting in comparison to everyone else because he's from the big city and it seems like he's rich and he's actually not been able to experience too many things that most of the kids in hokkaido take for granted one because he's not from hokkaido and two because he comes from this you know sort of family that uh, requires very strict behavior from him and so you know that kind of stuff happens right uh and yeah i i, I like him a lot he's a very kind of like neutral average guy because that's what rom-com protagonists are like uh <laughs> tadano from komi is really basic the main character from uh rosario vampire is really basic you know that sort of idea it's like that character but he happens to be rich and from tokyo in hokkaido in this in this novel right and obviously he's always going to be super earnest and like care about the people that interact with him and he's really interested in figuring out stuff and he's like is really happy with like the things that he experiences in hokkaido and you know it makes all the female characters around him kind of like endeared to him now the main female character here is minami fuyuki she is uh this gorgeous gal which like i said earlier is kind of like a valley girl or like a starbucks girl i don't like i don't know i don't know how to describe her because I, i'm not exactly sure how to describe a gal um but the one the version she is like the the version she is is someone that bleaches her hair blonde wears short skirts doesn't like like she prefers aesthetic appearance over like pragmatic function so even though it's fucking freezing she wears short skirts and cute dresses because she wants to look hot basically uh and she doesn't wear gloves on her hands so she can continue to use her phone at all times so there you go um i really like her so so much she's so flirty and so like genuine about how she cares about people and how she like interacts with them and i really like it so so much uh she's also super super cute like actually she's adorable it, like the title makes a lot of sense um thanks to her so i like her a lot and her mom is fucking cute as well her mom is like her but older and she doesn't have blonde hair she has like brown hair i think and she has a snaggle tooth so it's like snaggle tooth ara ara and gal all at the same time and it's like a match made in heaven i love her mom so much she's such a fun character um the, like the two times that she shows up but she's so cute i love it so so much um and then the the third female character that we have is Su suyuri um akino who is like this introverted gamer girl basically um and she's kind of like a sundere but it's funny because she's not a sundere with subasa she's a sundere with minami um because she's like really nervous and so she like uh is really blunt with her and kind of like um 
shuns her, or like, not shuns her, like, she doesn't interact with Minami the way Minami wants her to, but she still cares and she gets really flustered and it's really cute. I really like it a lot. But obviously, because there's two hot main female characters, our boy is kind of like becoming a harem king. Uh, and it's kind of like, oh, which one is he gonna date? Which one is he not? But obviously, it's not there yet because there's only like 40 chapters so far. So the story is actually gonna move quite slowly, I think. But, you know, we're we're padding the character sheet right now and we're kind of developing who is gonna be important and who isn't. And the three that are important are Tsubasa, Minami, and Sayuri, or Sayuri. So there you go. Uh, we did get introduced to a new female character at the end of volume two, and her name is Rena, and she's like uh, a senpai to everyone. So she's a year older than them. And she's really odd. Like, I don't know, like Luna Lovegood, uh, <laughs> Luna Lovegood in uh, Harry Potter. That sort of like, what the fuck is she doing? But why is she cute kind of way? You know what I mean? It's, it's very interesting. And I'm really excited to see where the story goes from here. But I didn't want to read all of it because I wanted to enjoy the story. So yeah, the world building is really good. Um, like, well, for a slice of life, because it teaches you a lot of stuff about Hokkaido. And given that all of the, you know, slice of life rom-coms that I've read are usually happening in Tokyo, because it's always like small town girl moves to big city kind of thing. Um, I'm learning a lot about different things that are kind of only exclusive to Hokkaido. And I think that's really interesting. Um, and a lot of like the cultural tidbits that they share are pretty cool as well. But it's not really like world building. Really, it's more like explaining the situations that they're kind of going through, right? So it's really interesting in that sense. Uh, Art-wise, it's gorgeous. I love it so, so much. It's a very kind of like, I don't know what to call it. It's just like nice. You know what I mean? Like, it's just really attractive. <laughs> like visually, it's just really aesthetic and it looks really nice, but it does have a little bit of like that kind of like really scratchy kind of feel to it. So it's it's like really odd because that kind of like scratchy feeling adds a little bit of a pizzazz to it and it makes me like quite enjoy it. But it reminds me a lot of the art from uh, Rent a Girlfriend or the other one, uh, Dress Up Darling. So it's somewhere in between those two and I quite like it. It's very, very nice. Um, it's just so pretty looking, so yeah. And the backgrounds for the story are also really good. So yeah, fan service, like I said, it is a bit raunchy sometimes, but overall I think it's really good. Um, it's definitely more on like the thick kind of side. So if you're not into that, it's like not for you, I guess, but I think it's really pretty. It looks really nice. And it's funny that like she gets super crazy reactions out of uh, Subasa. So it's a lot of like comedy involved in it, right? So yeah. Uh, and the rating here is a 5 out of 5. I thought this was super enjoyable. I loved it so much. It was like the type of stuff I get from Komi, but with a little bit more uh, like adult, like um, like a little bit more adult feeling in the in line with like uh, Dress Up Darling or Rent a Girlfriend. So I actually really liked it. it I thought it was really nice. Um, the thing that really stood out to me here was the art style and just like the the care that the translators put into explaining how everything in Hokkaido works so that you can understand it and so I think that to me deserved a five because I, I was not expecting it to be that good and then it just kind of like hit me that it was oh my god this is awesome so there you go five out of five for this story I really really do enjoy it and uh yeah I definitely recommend it I think if you like you know, stories of that sort, like Dress Up Darling, Komi, uh, Rent a Girlfriend, Gal Gohan, maybe? I haven't actually read Gal Gohan, but I know a little bit about it. And I think that if you like Gal Gohan, you'll probably like this one. So check it out. I hope you guys enjoy. And uh, yeah, that's it for me. So yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below. Let me know what you thought. And if you guys know any other series like this that are available in English, please let me know down in the comments. I would actually really appreciate it because I think that this is like the specific type of rom-com that I like. 
So if you guys could uh, share some more titles with me, that'd be awesome. But uh, yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. See you guys later.